Uh, so I'm Eric, and I'm the founder and CEO of JAMA. And uh, what, uh, what we do is we're a software company, and we work with large companies uh, that are building products, and we help them go from concept all the way through launch. And if you think about it, if you're building something like a smartphone or a spacecraft or a, a, a really complicated piece of software, and you have 1,000 people working all around the globe, trying to get to that, hit that launch date, all of those decisions and the specifications that are changing on a daily basis, you need to manage that. So we provide a solution that helps manage that. And our BHAG is we, wanted, uh, we want all 100 Fortune 100 companies managing every decision that's made about their product and our software. We've got, we're now up to 20, so we've grown a few. So just a little bit on JAMA. We are we've about 70 people, and we're headquartered here in Portland. We are five years old, and we've grown about 2,000% in the last five years. So we've gone from... Uh, a million in uh, sales uh, to this year will be just under 20. So, and we've done that uh, with some early angel investment, which is the Oregon Angel Fund here in town. Uh, but we've not taken any venture funding to date. So that's a little bit about, about the company. So I was out to dinner uh, a couple of weeks ago with a friend who's also a startup entrepreneur, uh, just getting started. And I was explaining this event, and it's kind of the first time we were doing this and what I was going to talk about. And so through the course of dinner, we had a bottle of wine, we were having some drinks, and we got this napkin out and started like sketching out what the speech was gonna be. And we had some amazing insights in this phenomenal presentation that I was gonna give. And unfortunately, a couple of days later, I pulled this out of my pocket and I looked at it and I'm like, all right, I have no idea what I wrote here. It looks like there's like a solar system and an orange. So I'm not gonna give you those insights today. But what we did talk about was, he was really curious about how did we get the company off the ground? Like, how did we close our first couple of customers when you really didn't have anything? You weren't, nobody knew who you were. And then he was curious, you know, how did you then get past that kind of that magic million dollar mark? And then when things really started scaling, how did you make sure that the wheels didn't fall off? So I'm gonna talk about that today. So, so I'll talk about how we got our first customers. So uh, in the early days, we were focused on a space called requirements management, which you probably don't care about because it's a very small space that I'm really passionate about. But is kind of niche and we were selling to somebody called a business analyst or a product manager which really doesn't have a lot of authority in an organization and kind of you know kind of just heads down writing I used to be one to kind of heads down writing documentation and we had to figure out a way to reach them so we started we figured let's just turn that on an end let's make this the most important position that you could have and we started writing white papers and articles and we wrote things like called like you know five reasons why the business analyst deserves a raise is your CRO going to be the next chief requirements officer? And it was just these kind of creative, fun ways of getting people to read what we were writing. And it worked. We started getting attention. And we had this opportunity with a company called SpaceX, which now has been in the news a lot. And you probably guys hopefully have heard of what they're doing. They're replacing, they replaced NASA's space shuttle program. And so they're down in, the, in California. And we had an opportunity. We had the technical folks that wanted our solution. So what we did is a bunch of us got a video camera, and we spent a day, and we just made this very personal video where we spoke directly to Elon and his team. We said, hey, Elon, you know, this is who we are. This is why we think you should work with us. We understand your problem, and we're going to do everything it takes to solve it. And that actually made the difference, and we won that deal. And they became one of our best customers over the years. Another example kind of like that is we had a prospect that mentioned she had been to Portland and she loved Stumptown coffee. So we immediately ran out to Stumptown, grabbed a pound of coffee, put it with some mugs, handwritten note, and we sent it to her and we won that deal. And so these little things that we were doing that took a while, the video took a day to create, you know, it took us a couple hours to run to Stumptown. Um, but we started creating like this video uh, clips that then we could assemble. And so now in about an hour we can create this personal video that we can send out to somebody that we really care about. And we order Stumptown coffee by the pallets. So we get like 300 pounds and we spend a Saturday and we mass assemble these boxes and then we have notes and you can hand write a note and you can send it to somebody. But it's these unique things that I think is kind of the takeaway of those early days is pay attention to your prospects and figure out kind of unique low cost ways that you can kind of stand out from the crowd. And that'll help you, that helped us kind of get our first couple of deals. So now we had some customers, but we didn't have many. We just had a few. And we were competing in this space where we were going up against IBM and HP on a daily basis. And they had every feature. I mean, these products they had were just massive. And so we were just cranking away. We were like building features as fast as we can. And our customers were like, but you still don't have this feature and you don't have that feature. 
And it, was really, it really sucked. I mean, it's really hard to compete against these very large companies. The challenge was our customers, people that were paying us, were saying, you know, go build another feature, you know, improve your reporting, and you, know, you need to be more scalable, and add feature X, Y, and Z. So we had to make this kind of bet the company decision where we took everyone and we said, we're going to spend the summer and we're going to solve this uh, process of figuring out how to do reviews better. And so we built something called the Review Center, and it basically allows writers to pull the reviewers into the process much early, and it's social, and it's collaborative, and it's fun to use, and it just works. It's basically kind of track changes done right. Uh, because when we had interviewed the stakeholders, they said, we really want to be part of the process. We just absolutely hate getting an email, a 100-page document, and then having to like turn change tracking on and eight colors later, you know, I try and figure out what my, what my feedback was. So that was a case where we did this different, and it became a differentiator for us. And over, well, it wasn't overnight, but over a year, we grew the company from about a million to three million. And we were kind of off to the races. So we had found something that allowed us to differentiate us from our competition, and that was huge. We were passionate, we were excited about it, we believed in it, and that just came through in every call that we did. No longer was it, do we have feature X, Y, and Z? It was, no, we have this, and this is much better. So now we're scaling the company, we're cruising right along, it's really easy. At that point, all you just hire people, point them in the right direction, and everything's great. The, and we did that. We went from eight people to about 45 people in 18 months. The problem was, the founding team, myself, we still were doing everything ourselves. And we hired these people, these brilliant people, and we said, hey, you're so brilliant. You gotta come work for us. You've got this unique genius. We want you to come join the team, help us grow, show us how to do things. And when they showed up, we said, you know what? Actually, don't do it that way. We do it this way. And we said, yeah, I know that's a great idea, but you know, it's really not that good. We've tried it already. It doesn't work. <laughs> and so even though I'd read all these books and blogs, I was, I'd become that founder that couldn't let go. And what I started doing was kind of watching the results. So I started paying attention to the results and found that actually we hired pretty capable people. They could get the job done and actually a lot better than what I could do. And so I started paying attention to results versus how they were doing it. And that'll let me, that let me let go. The problem was is that when I did that, everyone was doing my job. So I didn't have to go on sales calls anymore. The product was getting built without me. Uh, no one had to like, log into QuickBooks and see how our balance sheet was doing because I had somebody to do that. So it was like, what am I, you know, what am I gonna do next? Uh, what's my job? So fast forward, today I really work on three things, which is, and I spend my time focused on setting the vision. Uh, so making, and it's really not setting the vision, but it's painting a really clear picture that everyone across the company knows where we're headed. And then secondly is building the team, and we're constantly recruiting. We have 20 open positions. If you want us to go to the website and see what those are, and you can help us fill those, that'd be great. Um, and then lastly is make sure that we have enough cash in the bank. But there's a fourth thing that I think is really important as well, and that is helping set the tone for culture. And the reason I think that's so important is that's critical to scaling your company. And what I mean by that is someone told me that, you know, hey, Eric, when you talk, you have a megaphone. I was like, no, no, I'm just part of the team. I'm just, you know, one of the guys. And they were like, no, actually, you know, when you say something, people pay very close attention to that. And so I could either ignore that or I could use it. And so the way that I try and use it, and I'm still trying to figure this out, is to look for points in time when I see my team living one of our core values. And so as an example, if you remember SpaceX that I was talking about, fast forward a couple of years, they had a new team that came on board with a really aggressive uh, plan. They, were gonna, they wanted to go up and hit the space station which, where they were gonna make history. And our services team dove in and went above and beyond to help them ramp up and really achieve that goal. And they did that, no one asked them to do it. They just, it was the right thing to do and they did it. And on Friday, I came back to the office after doing some traveling and there was a box there. And in the box was a letter from SpaceX and a plaque, and it said, um, it was cool, they said, hey, you know, John, what was to the, service, the services team, and they said, thanks so much uh, for helping us uh, with all of the hard work that you guys did. We were able to achieve our goal, we made history, we hit the International Space Station, it's the first step to colonizing Mars, and as a thank you, we sent this patch up to space and back, and we put it on this plaque, and Elon signed it, and thanks. So that, you know, the whole team was like, wow, this is such a cool moment. 
And it was all because our services team went above and beyond. So that is going to become one of the JAMA legends, I'm sure of it, that years from now, when somebody on the services team goes out to work with a customer, they're going to go the above and beyond. They're going to go the extra mile because it's one of our core values. Without, and it's going to be because they know the story of the time that our services team went above and beyond and we helped SpaceX go accomplish this mission. And it was a very meaningful thing. So I think that's going to enable us to scale our company and our culture and our values without me having to like go talk to every single person and communicate those. So I think you're kind of getting the theme of my talk today, which is pay attention. So pay attention in the early days to those prospects that you're trying to target and make sure that you're doing kind of unique creative ways that you can stand out from the pack. And then lastly, as your team grows, pay attention to your team and use that megaphone that you have to really kind of shine a light or spotlight those core values that you really want to have grow and keep maintain and be a big part of what you're doing as a company. And I guess last is when you write notes on a napkin and it's late at night, make sure you pay attention so you can remember what those, those comments were. But anyway, that's what I uh, wanted to talk about today. Thanks.